Hi guys. Wait. Hi guys, welcome to Bolfs here. I'm pretty sure that's my job. Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Gavin from Ballsteam Steven. As you can see, I've got Eliza here helping me. So, as, I as the title of this video is, it is the death of Facebook, unfortunately. <laughs> Never mind, eh? Uh, <laughs> you guys know I'm not a massive fan of Facebook and there are good reasons for that. And some of those reasons, I'm going to explain why, uh, why we're, basically why Facebook was good in the beginning and where we're at now. And basically why I feel this is good for the hobby and exactly what's going wrong or what's going right and where we're going to go moving from here. So right now I'm just going to get rid of this little one so I can concentrate and do what I'm going to do. So thank you. No thank you. <laughs> so um, as I said guys what's basically happened is and for those who don't know I presume everyone know because I'm a little bit late to the party but Facebook has basically stopped the sales of animals on their website uh, for me this is a good thing when you think back in the day what Facebook was used for what it should have been used for was almost like a telephone directory uh, you know you could meet and greet and make contacts all over the world and it was fantastic what happened was way back in the day when there were reptile forums reptile forums were amazing you could get on there ask questions and chat with like-minded people and it was awesome then we had the keyboard warriors that started getting involved bullying and then things started getting a little bit out of hand there was stuff being sold and there was no real moderator uh, or moderators basically uh, sort of monitoring what was being sold and what wasn't being sold so what you had was um people who were selling animals which had problems or there was people uh, stitching people up regarding money so they'd sell something as a het and it wasn't really a het so a lot of the big breeders jumped on Facebook and it did do really well for sales uh, but not only for sales it was also a way of showing people on a platform what they were producing and what they were working with uh, over that said year then what happened was again the keyboard warriors went from one platform to another and then you started having um, all sorts of people that again we were, we were having people that were on there that were ripping people off we had people on there that were selling animals that weren't their animals they'd just taken pictures or uh, from the internet and started selling them as their own so of course people who believed in those people or breeders were sending money and basically being done out of uh, you know money not receiving the animal for me that was a massive problem and I stayed away from Facebook and never went back on Facebook at all it was just nothing but from what I could see there was bullying going on there was, there was all sorts really going on um, and, and for me it wasn't a, a great place to be if that makes sense so of course what was happening was people were buying animals and being ripped off left right and center Facebook over the years has really got out of control there's a lot of YouTube videos on what's been going on on Facebook regarding sort of data breaches all sorts of, of, of weird and wonderful things for me fa Facebook has never been the platform for selling your animals it's been great to network what was happening was there was groups being made and again we had this whole segregation issue and where there were people in a group, let's say, who was um, the, the leader of the group, let's say, was actually bullying people for asking simple things like, what's the best temperatures, or what's this, or what's that? Simple questions that they should have been able to ask. Um, they weren't, and they were being mocked. And that for me is, you know, there's no need for it. If someone wants help, just give them help, simple. So for me, Facebook, and again, this was stuff being screenshot and sent to me and you know how people were made to feel in certain groups and there wasn't just one group, there was multiple groups. For me, it just, it just seemed to be getting worse and worse and worse. And um, now what's happened is Facebook have obviously banned the sale of animals and anything kind of reptile, you know, if, it, if your uh, post may hint towards a sale then they completely wipe it off now for me that's a good thing <clears throat> like i said because what you got to look at is 
people were complaining that they were being ripped off and the reason why they were being ripped off or mugged off was because there wasn't no moderators or no moderation or anyone looking over the actual site regarding who was selling what. So I could set up a page tomorrow and sell an animal that didn't belong to me, receive 50 pound deposit off someone. Let's say if I took one of Justin's Batmans, started offering it for sale and started taking 50 pound off various people as a deposit. You imagine over a week, you can make a lot of money and then guess what, <sniffs> disappear. And that's what was happening among other things. So when the Morph Market came, uh, for me, it was such a fantastic platform for everyone to be able to sell their animals that they didn't no longer need or didn't or produced in a clutch that they weren't looking to hit. So it was a way of obviously selling securely and being able to sell your animals all over the world. With Morph Market, they are going to some amazing new lengths with what they have done and where they are going. And that for me is only good. There's a lot of things involved and a lot of people in the UK have sort of said, you know, have you got to pay in the UK? Have you got to, have you got to do this? Have you got to do that? The simple answer to, to that is basically, no, you don't have to pay in the UK. Yes, you do have to submit a driving license or proof of identification, but to me, that's a real good thing. Um, you're providing details to John Layman's company or to, to the platform to make yourself more of a credible breeder. And to me, that's a good thing. Not only does Morph Market offer uh, a great way to uh, look at animals and, and price animals, they've also got genetic wizard on there, etc., etc. It's also a way of seeing who is selling that animal and then being able to research that person. And to me, that's exactly what Facebook should be used is as a profile for you as a breeder or you as a person. Uh, if someone goes to your morph market, checks you out, then they can go to Facebook and check you out and, and bit of a story back history, that, that sort of thing. Obviously, you can also set yourself up a website. Again, also in Morph Market, you also have a section where you can tell people about yourself and about what you do and about the whole projects that you're working with. You know, Morph Market is really in depth and it does take a few, let's say half an hour to set up, okay? But I'll guarantee you, once you've set it up, it is well worth it. There is so many things you can do on that platform that, that we, you know, John hasn't even sort of exploited, you know, what you can and can't do on there. He's looking to maybe get some forums on there, you know, back to the forum days when it was really good and some moderators and all that sort of stuff. But I'm not going to tell you all what John's told me, but I can tell you it is exciting where John's going with the Morph Market. So going back to Facebook, and I know a lot of people have been jumping on the new platform, which I think is called MeWe or something like that. Great, fantastic, and I've, you know, a few people are, have invited me over to join it and all that sort of stuff. But for me, it's another Facebook. You're gonna have no moderators on there. You're gonna have no one being able to, you know, again, I could go and set up uh, a page on there and sell one of Justin's or Ozzy's or, or someone else's animals and take a load of deposits and still do a runner. If you leave yourself open to that sort of thing, then you're gonna get your fingers burnt, unfortunately. And that's something that, you know, I, I still get messages today, emails, say, I, I, you know, I brought this animal, I brought this Super Mojave uh, off this breeder. Is it a Super Mojave? And in my eyes, I'm thinking, well, why are you asking me? You're asking me because you're unsure about that breeder. And then when they send me the picture, it's actually just a Mojave, not a Super Mojave. So then when I bounce it back and I say, actually, it's just a Mojave, not a Super Mojave. Then they say, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I meant, a Mojave. Was it really what they meant? Or was it that they feel a bit embarrassed that they've been missold an animal and they don't want to sort of admit that they've been stung? It's very difficult. And unfortunately, there are people out there, and it doesn't matter what industry, what hobby you are in, there are people where there's money to be made, there is also scams to be made, okay? So, it doesn't matter. You know, I have an email once a month from PayPal or from my bank saying I need to log in. You know, there's a problem, please click on this link and 
it's all a scam. See, there are scam scammers out there and it doesn't matter where it is, but what you've got to do as a person who's going to buy a reptile or someone that's going to be a breeder or want to be a professional looking breeder, you need to cover yourself and you need to go down the right channels, you need to go to the right platforms and look up the right sort of people. Okay, um, Instagram for me is a great platform. Uh, it's nothing but fantastic, really is really is fantastic. I don't see any issues at the moment with that. Um, you could go down the realms of people could say, well, yeah, you know, you can do the same on Facebook. You can advertise a, an animal for sale and it's not really yours and take deposits. Yeah, you're right. But if you're gonna be one of those people who are gonna buy off one of those websites instead of buying off Morph Market, then you're leaving yourself open, you know? So the death of Facebook for me, <laughs> I mean that, not literally, but the whole not selling reptiles on, on Facebook for me is a good thing. And I think it's a good move in our hobby. Um, John Lehman has spent a lot of hard work on Morph Market. Everyone was panicking about that Facebook and they've jumped all onto this other uh, me, we, or whatever it is. Uh, so yeah, it is me, we. A lot of people have jumped onto that, which is fine. You know, I don't understand how it works. Um, I've got a bit of feedback from people. Um, I might have a little bit of a play with it, but for me, I still think it's gonna be like, uh, gonna end up very similar to Facebook, but hey ho. Sorry to have a little bit of a rant, but I just wanted to get this off my chest because a few people have asked me what I think and feel about the subject. And for me, like I said, it's not a bad thing at all. Uh, just a couple of things off the back of that. Uh, for those people in the UK who are doing auctions, please get some clarification. I have been told that auctions of live animals in the UK is against the law. Don't hold me to that. You guys need to get in touch with your local councils and local authorities and get some uh, facts on that. But just be careful, okay? Because I don't want anyone to obviously get their fingers burnt by their animal welfare officer. Uh, coming around knocking their door saying we've seen you've got some animals up for auction um but yeah do, do some research guys okay thanks for all your support everyone hope you're all well and believe me love and respect you all take care and i'll speak to you guys soon